comfortable and our food will last a little bit longer because we've moved inside. So welcome everybody to worship. Happy Father's Day. We're going to reflect a little bit more on Father's Day during the sermon, but uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Uh, just briefly want to say this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Okay, that was enthusiastic. <laughs> I'll try that again. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. All righty. Uh, all the announcements are on the back of your sheet, uh, your bulletin, which is a booklet today because there's a lot of songs in there. Uh, two things I particularly want to lift up, and that is that the community meal is this Tuesday from 5 to 6. You can come and help out. That would be great. And then um, the New Generation Singers from St. Joe will be here next Sunday. They're uh, six, 50 to 60 singers, plus some of their parents. So that will tell you a little bit about parking and about the sanctuary. Sanctuary will be full, parking will be full. I think the Methodists won't mind if we go park on their street. Uh, well, it's not their street, it's God's street, but anyway. Uh, so just be aware that the parking lots may be full fast next Sunday, and if you want to come a little early and hear them rehearse, that's fun. Uh, but, uh, and just be ready for a lot of folk upstairs and a lot of the parking to be uh, filled up as well. So just just a, head, just a little heads up. Huh? Courthouse parking lot. Courthouse parking lot, street parking, uh, parking on Chestnut, so... Just keep that in mind. Uh, are there any other announcements? All right. Well, uh, I invite you to stand in body and or in spirit, and let's join me in the call to worship. God has given us this beautiful earth. And all, be to God. And all that grows upon it. God has given us breath to live and spirit to sing. Thanks be to God. God has gathered us into a community of care and worship. Let us worship God with love, thanksgiving, and praise. All right, so we're going to do a couple of songs. The first one's going to be Rock of My Soul. And I don't know if uh, you want to stand and hold your uh, music or sit and put your music on the table and clap along. What's your preference? We're going to sit. Sit. Okay, everybody sit down. <laughs> That means you're going to have to clap, right? I bet you know this little ditty. Rock of my soul and the blues of my day.
right, I'm going to interrupt the song because we're going to do a little gospel aerobics, all right? So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. Now be attentive to your neighbor. Don't smack your neighbor in the face. Because then the prayer of confession will really have meaning for you. So wide, you can't get around it. You must go into the door. All right, let's pick it up at so high. So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get around it. You must go into the door. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock of my soul. And we're just going to slide. First, let's take a moment of silence and then uh, share with God whatever you need to share that, uh, you know, maybe you've gotten in the way of your walk with God this week. Give thanks to God for God being, you know, like a welcoming father who welcomes us home when we've strayed away. So let's take a moment of silence. let us pray together. Oh God, we delight in your summers, your warming sun and your balmy night air, the first marigolds in our gardens and the rows of new lettuce. We take pleasure in your summertime earth. God, sometimes we use the world as if it were just another disposable product. Sometimes we ignore our debts to your planet and pretend that there will never be a day of reckoning. Sometimes we can think we can get anything we need at our local discount store. 
Sometimes we even think the world belongs to us. We delight in your summertime earth, gracious God. Teach us to live in it reverently. Teach us the miracle of your earth. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Friends, the earth is the Lord's, we are the Lord's, and when we come home to God, we are welcomed and forgiven. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Well, we're going to do a couple things during our Young Messengers of the Earth. The first thing we're going to do is I uh, might be teaching you a new song. I don't know. Um, so, uh, first of all, I apologize to all the sopranos. I am a low alto, and you're Thank singing you. in my key today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, there's a song called All God's Critters Got a Place in the Choir. Some sing lower and some sing higher. Another little movement, movement song so you can get your movement in today. Some sing out loud like on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands. Now you clap on hands, not on clap. I know that seems weird to your brain. Some just clap their hands. Or pause. Put your paws out, however you want your paws to look, uh, or anything they got now. Now there are um, there are animal sounds. So uh, Jada, how what does a, a cow sound like? Moo. Moo. You want to come up here and speak in the microphone? You love talking in the microphone. <laughs> come on. <laughs> All right. What sound does a cow make? Moo. Okay. Jalen, you want to participate? No. Okay. Uh, do you know how a coyote sounds when he howls? No. Is it? Oh! Can you do that? Oh! Oh, that's good. Very good. Um, then there is the, uh, now a porcupine talking to himself. I'm going to have to teach you that sound. So think about porcupines. Do you? Do you ever go up and hug a porcupine? No. So porcupines are probably kind of solitary figures. They're probably introverts. You probably spend a lot of time alone. But even if you're alone, you know, you talk to yourself. So the porcupine just talks to herself. Mumble, 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 mumble. Can you do that? Mumble, mumble, mumble. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the very last verse, it's one great symphony. You all get to hit whatever note you want, okay? Just hit a note. We do that all the time. And, and Frida says you're used to doing that. It, it, it may not be the note on the music stand, but now you're completely free, okay? Now, do you want to do my sounds? Do you want to do all the sounds again? Okay, the old cow just goes moo. No. Okay, we can do a little more dramatically than that, but we'll get there. Uh, the old coyote howls. The porcupine talks to himself. And it's one great symphony. Practice your note. Earlier's are so proud of you. <laughs> All right, now this uh, the tune's pretty simple. It just goes like this. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing lower, some sing higher, some sing out loud like on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. All right, let's try it. Remember, uh, put your uh, Sing higher. <laughs> then we'll launch into the verses. All oh, God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing lower, some sing higher. Some sing out loud like on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or pause for anything they got now. Listen to the bass, it's the one on the bottom where the bullfrog jumps and the hippopotamus. Oh, pretty good. All God's got a place in the choir. Some sing lower, some sing higher. Some sing out loud on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. Dogs and cats, they take up the 
middle of a hummingbird comes and the crickets fiddle. The donkey brays and the pony neighs and the old coyote owls. because the family was on vacation and so we wanted to bring her up and her family's here today uh, and present her with her scholarship and a gift from all of you so Emily come on up and uh, you're gonna have to let people know what's up. So here we go. We'll just do this very casually. Hi Emily. Uh, you just graduated from high school which is no small achievement so which high school did you graduate from? Lansing. What was like your favorite class in high school? <laughs> um, culinary? Culinary. Oh, so we can all come to your house and you'll cook us something? No, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> what, what's like one of your favorite dishes to make? <laughs> okay, she's never coming to church again, or she's not going to come near me anymore. Well, you know, culinary is good, a good thing. It's good for all of us to, uh, to, to uh, cook. So you're uh, hoping to start college this fall, and where are you thinking of going? KCKCC. Okay. And going to be doing your general eds, or also focusing in a particular area? Um, I think I'm going to do cosmetology. Right. So instead of coming over to your house for dinner, we're going to come over to your house to get our hair dyed purple. <laughs> I think Jim Garrett should be your first customer. I love seeing all the stripes in Jim's hair. So we are very proud of you. You've been part of this congregation a long time. I've only just met you, but I appreciate you and your sister's care for my ragamuffins back there. Uh, so we have a gift for you. You were one of the recipients. Whoops. Uh, this is. It was put in the wrong envelope. Okay, but it's the right name. Okay. <laughs> this envelope has a different name on it, but we'll get the actual. So, First Presbyterian Church uh, is presenting to Emily Latewski. I always pronounce her. Latewski. See, the W mix messes me up. It's a V, isn't it? A V sound. Latewski. Um, she's receiving the Carol Ann Lowe Scholarship. Uh, so she will have a thousand dollars toward her uh, college this fall for outstanding academic achievement, community service, and faithfulness in the church. So we thank you. Um, we also got a book for all of our graduates uh, from the sort of Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University universe. And if you haven't become uh, familiar, I think this will be helpful. They help folks get out of debt and be really responsible with money. And that's a hard thing to learn. So this book is called The Graduate Survival Guide, Mistakes You Can't Afford to Make in College. 
Uh, I think it's a fun book and it might uh, point you in the direction of their website, but we want to give that to you as well. Uh, so hopes that you get launched really well. And uh, we're very proud of her, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the other thing we want to do uh, is uh, I want to ask Jalen and Jada, you won't have to talk, but I want you to come up here because uh, you're going to help me out. Uh, we want to honor our, our fathers today and all the men of the church. Um, first of all, if you are a father, I'd like for you to stand up. If you can. If you are able, yeah. or raise your hand, Gerald. <laughs> well, we thank you because we know that being a father is tough. Uh, these two kids father my son, Sydney's here today, and I'm so glad to have him here. Um, stay standing, uh, fathers, because if you are to father, I suspect that you've had a, um, a you've been able to be a part of. Uh, young people's lives as an uncle uh, or as a uh, as a brother, maybe an older brother, uh, or if you have a father, please stand. <laughs> Whether the father is alive or not alive. <laughs> All right, or yeah, or wave your head. So yeah, that includes yeah. <laughs> so uh, those of you who are young and may become fathers later on, or those of you who have a chance to be a part of a young person's life, we thank you uh, for that work. We're going to have some reflecting on being a father a little later on in the sermon. Uh, but we have a gift for all the men, young men and uh, uh, fathers and men who are part. And you are yes, you are a young man. Uh, we have. This is a, uh, a pen and uh, bookmark set. It says, God's uh, direction is always best. God will be our guide. And the kids are going to take these baskets around and give one of these to all the men who are here. Uh, so you can sit down now. And if there's some extras left over, no, here. Uh, you, okay, take, you take this side. And Jalen, if you'll take this side over here. And pass it out to all the men without knocking all of them over. There you go. Okay. Did you get Rick right there? Right behind you? Right next to you? Yes. All the men. And if there are leftovers, and uh, which I think there might be, we'll put them back on the table. If you want to take one of these to somebody who's not able to be here today, um, but you would like for them to have a pen and a marker, that would be great. All right, did any... Men, did any men not get one of these yet? Everybody got one? Don't be shy. Did you get one back there? Okay. All right. Well, thanks, guys. And as we uh, transition into hearing uh, God's word, it's great, of course, to have, uh, well, who are you going to? It's for men, so you got to give it to a man. Well, he's a man. You got one on Mother's Day. You're a girl. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is a very good example of what goes on in our house every day. Uh, it's always good to have Bob pray. You know, Bob blesses us many, many weeks with his flute music along with Frida and Bob. Thank you for uh, for being with us. So many weeks we, we are a part of the community. And they're going to kind of move us into our time of uh, hearing God's word.
Lord be with you. And also with you. You know, in, in all the in all the deep sadness that I have felt and I suspect you all have felt in the aftermath of the uh, school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, it hit me yesterday that there are 21 fathers who lost a son or a daughter on that day. And it, it's hard to imagine what kind of a Father's Day this is for them. But in the midst of all of this, the body of Christ must once again take on the mantle of the Prince of Peace. More on that in just a little bit. The, uh, the prophet Elijah lived in an interesting time in ancient Israel's history. Uh, his prophetic ministry occurred after the reigns of King David and King Solomon, and in a time of less capable kings. Now, once the nation of ancient Israel split into the northern kingdom of Israel with its capital in Samaria and the southern kingdom of Judah with its capital in Jerusalem, once that split happened, the die really was cast uh, for the future political and national demise of those two kingdoms. So through those turbulent early years of that national split, in, right after that national split, the prophet Elijah offered a prophetic voice. And, and he battled with corrupt kings, corrupt priests, and corrupt prof, uh, prophets. So what Elijah did is he critiqued the systems of injustice. And therefore, because he did that, he was exiled. He was targeted for murder. <laughs> and he found kindness from outsiders, uh, outside of the circle of ancient Israel's people. And he forged a prophetic tradition that would be followed by the likes of Isaiah uh, and Jeremiah. So in our Old Testament lesson for today, uh, we find Elijah at the end of his earthly life, and it is time for him to pass the mantle on to his protege, Elisha. So listen as I read from 2 Kings uh, chapter 2, verses uh, 1 through 14. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And Elisha said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has now sent me to Jericho. But Elisha said to Elijah, as the Lord lives and as yourself live, I will not leave you. So, are you getting a pattern going on here? They went to Jericho. And the company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And Elisha said, Yes, I know. Be silent. Now you can translate what that word might have really meant. <laughs> then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has now sent me to Jordan. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they were both standing by the Jordan. 
Then Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. And the water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. And when they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. And Elijah responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when Elisha could no longer see Elijah, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other. And Elisha went over to the other side. So I know that uh, what grabs our attention in that story is the whirlwind. You know, Elijah whirlwinding up to heaven. And gosh, what a way to go. Who doesn't want to go that way? I, I wouldn't mind arranging for us all to go to heaven by whirlwinding up. Uh, but I think that was a one-time thing in uh, Scripture. But it's, it's not the whirlwind that is important in this story. It's what Elijah left behind. And that's the mantle. Now, uh, last week we had a little fashion show during worship, as you recall, if you were here. Uh, and I shared with you last week that I wear a mantle, and it's called a stole. As pastors, uh, we are often given a stole when we are ordained as a symbol that we have been set apart uh, by the people of God and God for a particular ministry. And in the Presbyterian Church, it's called Minister of Word and Sacrament. But remember, uh, I am not the minister. Who are the ministers? We, we are people of the congregation. Who is the head of the church? Christ. Is that in your bulletin? Yes. yes. Okay, let's keep that in mind. So the stole that I am wearing today was given to me by someone who is familiar to some of you, the Reverend Don Schumacher. He was your interim pastor from 1993 to 1995, and Don was a friend and a mentor to me. And I was one of Don's pastors, particularly in the joyful and sad times of his life. I attended his first wife Twyla's funeral in 1991. I had just met Don the year before. I officiated at his daughter Rini's wedding in 1992. I officiated at his daughter Martha's funeral in 1993. I officiated at Don's wedding to Diane Nunley. Some of you were at that wedding in 1995. And I officiated at Don's funeral in 2010. So I've been a part of Don's life in, in the joys and the struggles of his life. He was the father of four daughters, kind of like Tevya in Fiddler on the Roof. And I think sometimes he felt like Tevya. And when Don became sick and knew that he wouldn't be able to preach anymore, he gave me this stole that he uh, received on one of his trips to El Salvador. And this stole <clears throat> reminds me uh, that this is part of my calling. 
Don was one of those Elijahs in my life, and I am blessed to have many Elijahs in my life. And as I was thinking about this idea of the mantle, this passing on of a role or a responsibility to a new generation, I started thinking about the mantle of fatherhood. So I would like to visit a couple of fathers in our congregation and use this uh, mantle uh, as a symbol of fatherhood. So the first person I'm going to come visit is Dick Gibson. And Dick if you would share a little bit about what the mantle of fatherhood has meant for you. But let me put the mantle. Well, I could uh, go back to my father. And uh, certainly music was always in, in our church, in our home, in our church. I could look at Boy Scouts. My father was an adult leader in Boy Scouts. But I'd really like to talk about fishing. My father would take us out, my brother and I, to go fishing. We would run a trot line late in the evening and then go back out and see if we got any catfish on it. And we would fish during the day, try and get some bass, but I was not very good at that. And then my son called me one day and he said, Dad, he says, I've got a fishing trip to Canada, and one of the guys can't go. And I said, okay, when is it? He says, next week. And I said, okay. Well, we went to Canada, and we've gone almost every year since then. And it was a challenge when my grandson said, Grandpa, I want to go fishing with you and Dad. And I said, can you swim? <laughs> And he says, no. And I said, well, when you can swim the length both ways, up and back, at the country club that your folks have a membership at, you can go fishing. Next year, he can swim. <laughs> There's nothing better than to be in a boat early in the morning, calm water, your son, your grandson, and you have the opportunity to commune with God. Fishing is a way to commune. It's a way to not only feed yourself, but to watch your son and your grandson grow. And when you can then put your arms around them and say, I'm proud of you. You know what it is to be a father. Next, I want to visit Chuck Allen. He's going to share thoughts. Well, as I thought about what to say today, um, you know my three kids. We've been here 10 plus years, so you've seen them grow up, and you've seen uh, the benefits of an involved dad, but I also want to say I appreciate the church family that they've been involved in. Uh, you have asked questions about their schooling, or you've, you've uh, military guys have shared stories. Um, you know, it's important for our kids to have that father that shows interest, but it's also important for, you know, the church community uh, you're to, to also show interest. Now, I'll just say, this morning Drake called up, because Chase and Drake are both at Army camps, and Drake wanted uh, some Army cadences. So, you know, you guys have all had a great impact on him because he wants to lead his platoon in marching, uh, which is great. Um, I want to also bring up, though, a very serious point about fatherhood, and I'm glad you brought up about Evaldi, you know, uh, and those fathers without their kids. Um, but we kind of have a crisis in America. You know, I just did a quick internet search 25% of today's families don't have their father at home. 57% of African American families don't have the dad at home. And it makes a huge impact on their cognitive development, on their self-esteem, and their social behavior. And 
so I, you know, if fathers had been involved, maybe some of this tragedy wouldn't happen. But I, uh, I just feel that in my heart that I got to share that, and somehow we got to figure out how to how to tell dads to stay at home and stay involved. Thank you very much. And finally, Jim Matheson. Thank you. I never imagined that I would be wearing one of Don's stole. <laughs> feel good about that. And as the oldest of the three of you, I hope you don't mind if I use a couple of notes. I, as you think about the impacts of, uh, of the mantle of fatherhood, though, you can probably think of a lot of different things. I would like to mention a couple or three, though, that I think are unique to me, or maybe uh, I'm, well, maybe not unique, but uh, they struck me. Uh, Lauren and I uh, adopted our first son, Mark, in 1969, shortly before I was to leave for Vietnam. And I, I started to tell a long story about what it was like to deal with the adoption agency. I, when they realized that I was going off. Uh, but I put that aside. Uh, one of the things that uh, happened to me was that my sense of responsibility was increased greatly. Uh, before, if something happened to me, Lorna could take care of herself, but now there was a little one. So I thought, thought uh, a lot about that. I was leaving home in just a few months, and I wanted to make as much of an impression on Mark as one can make on a baby, so I really worked hard at that. <laughs> the one that you don't think about perhaps too much nowadays, and I really had to work on intensifying my sense of imagination. In the days when communication was primarily by letter, Lorna would describe in great detail what Mark had done today. And I think long and hard about putting, these, putting them in the settings that I knew and try to imagine what was going on many thousands of miles away. So, let's leap forward 50 plus years. There's been a lot of other changes, a lot of up and down, this mantle of fatherhood has stayed with me. Well, we know that all of the fathers here have stories, and, and we don't want to make it um, like fatherhood is easy. It's not. There are so many complications about parenting in general, um, but when you connect to your source, God's love for you, it adds all the strength that you need. So I thank Dick and Chuck and Jim and all the fathers here. I want to go back to our story. Elisha, the one to whom Elijah you know, was passing on the mantle, he doesn't want Elijah to leave. And, and one of the sort of silly things that you heard in this story is Elisha following Elijah around. And they basically travel in this kind of circle. Uh, here they are going from Gilgal to Bethel. Uh, Elijah tells Elisha to stay put, but Elijah doesn't. Doesn't that sound like a father-son conversation? Uh, he keeps following his mentor because he knows that his mentor is leaving so they go back to Bethel, and there's this sort of Greek chorus of prophets uh, who keep asking Elisha, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? Yes, I know, says Elisha. Keep silent, though I think I imagine that Elisha might have told them to just shut up. <laughs> and then the whole scene gets repeated at Jericho, and then they come to the Jordan River, and Elisha doesn't want Elijah to go, and so he asks for a double portion of Elijah's spirit. And this is, this is a reference to the inheritance of a firstborn. 
Elisha is asking Elijah to have the status of Elijah's firstborn, to inherit more of his spirit than other prophetic heirs. Elisha is actually just asking for a fraction of Elijah's spirit, um, but more others would inherit uh, because this is a transfer of leadership moment. Elijah is going to be transfigured into a new prophetic leader for Israel, and it's not going to be easy because both northern and southern Israel is threatened, as is the faith of Israel, Israel's devotion and commitment to God is under threat. So this is not an easy job that Elisha is inheriting, just as it's not an easy job to be a father in 21st century America. Nor is it easy to be a Christian. So my brothers and my sisters, the ultimate mantle that we will all inherit is the mantle of Jesus. So let me read you a story. It's a familiar story, which is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but I'm going to read Mark's version. Interestingly enough, Elijah shows up in this story. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three memorial spots, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For Elijah. Because he did not know what to say, Peter didn't. He was terrified. And then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the clouds there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore. Just Jesus. That story is a preparation meeting for the disciples, and it's a preparation meeting for all of us as well. My friends, in, in the midst of terror and violence and poverty and despair in a world that sometimes feels hopeless, we carry the mantle of Jesus Christ. And in the beautiful transfiguration story with Elijah, God gives us our fundamental instructions. This is my beloved son, Jesus. Listen to him. Listen for how he heals. Listen for his teachings. Listen for his call to obedience. Listen and follow. Will you receive the mantle? Let's pray. Gracious God, I'm so grateful to hear um, the testimonies from the fathers who shared during the sermon time for the story of, a, of Elijah and Elisha who were um, a prophetic father and son and for the call from Jesus to continue to listen and to carry the mantle. Bless all the fathers here. Bless the fathers who are struggling and need help um, coming into their fatherhood. And bless all of us as we seek to listen and to accept your mantle. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn is Seek Ye First, the Kingdom of God. <laughs> Thank you. 
struggling with cancer. She lives in Seattle and Linda's there. And uh, Linda sent this to a number of folk, um, including myself and our church office. It's a picture of Erica. And uh, she writes, I've heard that having a photo of the person needing prayers assists those who are praying for Erica to keep her in mind. Please share with any who might be willing to join in a universe of prayers on her, her behalf. I'll be in Seattle for a couple of months um, as she, as Erica goes through chemo and radiation. So we're going to have this uh, out in the uh, foyer, you know, where we have 
uh, other prayer joys and prayer concerns. And if you see Erica's picture, get, send up a prayer for her. As I read each of these prayers, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayers. Thus the prayer of one becomes the prayer of us all. Let us pray. Marty has a new great-great-grandson, born uh, June 17th. His name is Amari Juan. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, Frank Ballard, uh, is um, he's having a, uh, a procedure this week, so we're keeping Frank, who's 92, in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Prayers for safe and timely summertime travels. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We pray for those who are recuperating from uh, illness, uh, from the illness of, in two, of two family friends. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Um, Margie Holland had a fall and uh, right now is in an assisted living place, so please keep her in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Uh, we lift up Erica Johnson and Linda and Carl as Erica goes through chemo and radiation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. 